Hello Pisces, welcome to Lotus Heart Tarot. I am so happy to have you joining me here. If you're new to my channel, welcome, welcome. I am very happy to have you. We are going to dive in straight into the reading. Please keep in mind always that these are general readings that, um, you know, you just take what resonates and leave the rest. What resonates is what you already feel is true and I'm just confirming it for you. Okay, what feels right to you. For Pisces, please, Spirit, for Pisces. Wow, okay. You guys have some kind of dream or something here that it's being protected. You're being protected. Yeah, there's a reason why you've had this inspiration or there's a reason why this information or this knowledge or this vision or this hope or this dream um, has come to you, <clears throat> has it's coming across as visited you. So I don't know what that means um, or why it feels like visited is an important thing for me to actually say. Um, you have aspiration and protection. This is... Um, there is something in front of you or there is something that it's like you are either you have gotten some kind of vision or you have some kind of dream or there's some kind of hope in your heart. There is something here and you know that it will possibly ask a lot of you or that maybe it already has. Um, but there is this energy of like, fear not, you're protected. Fear not, you know, this dream is protected. This dream is yours for a reason or this hope or this belief or whatever this is that we're talking about here. Um, it, it, it is, um, it is possible. Yeah, let me dive in here. It's almost like a vision that you hold for yourself or your future or like it's strange because for some people I feel like this is like a dream, a hope, a vision and for other people I feel like it's something tangible like even um, a plan for something or um, I don't really know how to describe it. Like you have to deliver it or you have to make it happen or something like that. I'm not really sure what this is. Okay. You guys are getting crocus, cheerfulness. Um, it is spring again. The earth is like a child that knows poems by heart. You know, this is making me feel very much like beginner's mind. Like opening your mind up to all the possibilities. When you're beginning something, it's very easy to say, I don't know anything about this. Any step that I take is going to be a good step because I'm going to learn something from it. And so there's something here where it's it's almost like releasing the ego or letting go of this feeling that you have to know everything about it already or that you have to be able to see the entire staircase. It may just be about seeing the stair in front of you and attempting it, you know, um, you have false indigo, immersion and intuition. When you reach the end of what you should know, you will be at the beginning of what you should set of, yeah, what you should sense. See what I'm saying? Um, these go together. It, it is like, it, it, it truly is like, you don't need to know how you get there or what happens or you know, you, you don't need all of that information. You need trust in your intuition and trust in the divine and trust in this energy that you are protected and that it's okay to not know everything at this time, but to really instead, instead of trying to tap into your mind and your processing, your like swords energy, it's more of tapping into that high priestess energy. Then you're getting lily, which is majesty and virtue. The lily the, is the emblem rare of many virtues, good and rare. Um, you know, in the um, Lenormand deck, the lily it, is a very positive card of, you know, receiving something, opening up something blooming. 
with this lily card here that's what it feels like it is like trust that you know when you get there or when you need to see it the way is going to appear or the path will show itself you just have to trust and use your free will choices to get yourself to that point okay um wow and then you're getting white rose new start and wisdom knowing yourself is the beginning of all wisdom um yeah you guys have some something is coming there's some new beginning coming there's some it is it is in like letting go of any like routinized belief system or any feeling that you have to know the entire thing and it is opening up to this trust and this intuitive knowledge and it is also trust that you hold this space for a reason in your mind it says rebirth and new beginnings new beginnings are often disguised as painful endings Okay, and then on the bottom of the deck, you have forget-me-nots. You guys are definitely closing out some kind of cycle here, and you're moving into a new one, and you have been for a while. And, you know, I feel so strongly about this. Okay, you have eternal memories. The best things in life are the people you've loved, the places you've seen, and the memories you've made along the way. So this may be about, you know, holding on to something, like, in the way of you know, remembering it or having reverence for the space it held in your life or the time that it was yours or um, what it taught you or what lessons you learned from it, um, but also not needing to cling to it or hold on to it. Okay, you guys are getting heart ease. This is um, the viola. Um, compassion, tread a little more tenderly. So this is about being kind to yourself. There is no failure. There is no, um, you know, everything in life is, I'm just kidding. There's no failure. There's no blame. There's no, there's nothing here worth being critical about uh, as far as an ending goes. It, it's not about beating ourselves up. It's not about holding on to the mistake we made or the mistake they made or anything like that. Blame prevents us from growth and from deeper understanding and deeper compassion. And so, you know, I, I, I still have a tendency, like even with my husband, um, to be like, oh my gosh, I can't believe you did that. That was totally your fault. Or like, you know what I mean? And then I'm like, wait a minute. Blame has no fault. It has no place here. I'm so sorry that I said that. It, it isn't your fault. You know what I mean? Or it doesn't really matter. It's kind of irrelevant. And it could have been me and it could have been you. I don't know if you guys saw that super tragic case of the rodeo, um, guy whose little three-year-old son died. And the mom came out and made this statement of just like that she knew three things and one of them is that she's not a perfect mom but she's a good mom who loves her kids and that you know it could have been anyone in that moment and you know things in life happen so fast they happen so quickly it truly you know it, it truly can be anyone you know what i mean and blaming is just so cruel there's no purpose in it there's no point in it um it holds no value in fact it holds the opposite it only damages um so there's this energy i'm sorry you guys my dogs have been so riled up they've been playing um what is it tug of war all morning and now they're barking and who knows why um but you have calla lily rejuvenation reawaken and then stand stronger yeah when you take out this critical thinking like even of ourselves right we frequently you know what we do to others is what we're at is a reflection of what we're actually doing to ourselves so if we're in a hurry to blame someone else then we may be in a hurry to blame ourselves or it may even be second nature like we may not even realize all the times that we're blaming ourselves and again, blame holds no value. There's nothing to be learned or gained by blaming. In fact, when we start to blame, it cuts off the opportunity to learn. It cuts off the opportunity to grow. It cuts off the opportunity to have compassion. And so it, it really cuts us off from expansion and growth. And so, and especially doing it to ourselves. So there is this sense of, you know, 
some kind of rejuvenation, some kind of reawakening where we are having that understanding of, you know, like, look, the, the, the ins and outs of who did what or what did who or what was responsible or what was the thing that was said or that was done or, you know, da, 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 da. we can let go of all of that and just kind of come to the space of peace and acceptance with what is, and that is how we complete the cycle it feels like because when we hold on to the blame and we hold on to all of these really heavy energies that serve no purpose we really are holding on to the cycle we're not letting the cycle close because we're holding it open with that resistance to learning the lesson which is coming in the form of criticism blame judgment those kind of things that really don't serve us and you have then azalea temperance which says find the balance and be centered. Once we come to this space where we release, we have compassion, we hold a space of compassion for ourselves even. Um, this could be for another and it could be for ourselves and it really could be for both because how we feel toward other people is a reflection of how we, we feel toward ourselves. So if we are really someone who blames other people for things, it really is a reflection of the fact that we're really blaming ourselves. Um, yeah, so with temperance, we can balance out and we can heal and we can find the space of growth and we can find the space of rejuvenation and we can find the space that allows us to finish something and begin something new when we let, let all those things grow, go that are stopping us from growth. Um, and with temperance, this is the healing. This is the rebalancing and the recentering. You can't balance when you're holding things like regret, when you're holding things like blame, when you're holding things like shame. You can't, you can't fully heal um, because that is always going to keep you off balance. Those are such lower vibrational energies. They're heavy. They're very, very, very heavy to hold. And so the only way for us to kind of rebalance is to really release them, is to look at them and to realize that they're not helpful, that they're not, they're, they're not in our highest and best good and to begin to kind of let them go. And once we, once we can even logically with our mind look at it and say, it doesn't matter because these things are preventing me from moving forward in life. These things are, are preventing me from being able to move beyond this lesson or this cycle. And so let me look at them. Okay, you know, when I look at them, I understand I have to hold a space of compassion for myself. And even the mom of that little three-year-old said, you know, I, I am going to rethink that choice that I made to let him, you know, ride his little toy truck or whatever around the property I, i'm going to rethink that i'm going to regret that for the rest of my life like i i'm going to i know that i'm going to live with that and sometimes it is coming to a place of peace and acceptance that there is nothing we can do we cannot turn back time we cannot go back we cannot make another decision and we have to hold the space of compassion for ourselves that certainly we know how much we loved our child and that we would never have ever let anything happen to that child on purpose you know what I mean? Or it, even if it, it wouldn't have even crossed her mind otherwise, I don't think she would have done it. You know what I mean? Um, but holding on, living in that space of that decision and not releasing ourselves from it, like feeling like we need to stay there and continuously blame and shame and criticize ourselves and have these regrets about it, it doesn't permit us to experience anything other than that for the rest of our life. So is that what we really want to do? You know what I mean? And how logical is that? You know, and, and for her, you know, she has another child. Um, so, you know, she, she doesn't, you know, she's got to be a mom still. She's got to trust herself to, you know, be a mother. I can't imagine it. I, my heart just goes out to her and I, I, I love what she said personally. All right, so let's jump into the tarot. I'm just gonna close my office door. Honey, 
Girl, you don't need to bark. There's nothing going on. It's okay, girl. I know, sweetheart. Okay. Why don't you... Oh, really? He's outside? Okay. All right. Well, you guys, I'm in the middle of recording a reading. <laughs> okay. Okay, Bubba. All right. Can you guys go lie down and relax for me, please? Can you calm down? <laughs> Bob D. Please? Come on. Go lay down. All right. Let's dive into the tarot. Let's hope this works. If you could see how cute they were. Oh my gosh, you guys. All right. For Pisces, what's going on here for Pisces? What is this all about for Pisces? Okay. Five of coins. There's some kind of loss. Um, or some kind of possibly a scarcity mindset. This can sometimes reflect that. Um, it could be a loss around a scarcity mindset. Okay, but we have the five of swords. Okay. You've got the lovers, the hangman, the five of swords, and the five of coins coming out to describe this situation. And I feel like this is talking about the ending or this is talking about something that's happened in the past that has... It, it, it's something that has messed with our mind. It is something that, you know, um, and this, the, 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 keep in mind, this doesn't have to be you. This could be your person's energy or someone close to you's energy with, um, the hangman and the lovers that's Pisces and Gemini. So that it doesn't have to be one of those signs, but it could be. Um, there is this energy, right, of there's something that needs to change. There's something that isn't serving our highest and best with the five of swords and the five of coins. The five of swords is like, you know, it can be manipulation. It can be thoughts that are defeating us. Um, it can be even words or things that are said that are hurtful or painful. I am especially drawn to how there is these three swords in the center and then these two swords outside. It's like almost separating the energies of the five of swords into the three of swords and the two of swords for me. So it's some kind of suffering that may have kind of left us in a state where we're stuck there um, or something that happened, some kind of painful thing that happened that um, has sort of just left us in this place where we're not totally willing or ready to like open up or to, you know, for me, the two of swords can be, you know, when you've had a bad breakup and it's maybe even caused you to like mistrust someone or it, it doesn't have to be a breakup. I mean, it, it can be a friendship. It can be, you know, whatever, even a job experience, whatever, something in life that's happened to you that has caused you to feel like you need to shut down a little bit. Like you don't really want to be open to all the energies that are out there. And that like, maybe there is a sense of mistrust there based on the experience we had. The two of swords is not meant to be a permanent place to rest. It is meant to be just a temporary situation. The it's a minor arcana. It's sort of like an everyday experience or it's, it's something that we use in a temporary way. Um, and you know, with the five of coins, the five of coins is a little bit heavier than the five of swords for me, because this can be where we develop a mindset that doesn't serve our highest and best good, where it's like, we sort of almost take on this energy of this happened to me. This could happen to me again. I, I need to stay here. You know, I, I need like, um, you know, I might not recover a positive way of looking at things, or I might not recover sort of um, a sense of wanting to even really open up or wanting to trust someone again, um, because I have a fear of abandonment, or I have, you know, it's a deep-seated fear that's really hard to release with a pentacle. It's something very solid, it's something very heavy, and it's something... A sword, as an air sign, I can tell you, you can move through sword energies kind of quickly, if you, if, 
if you're in that kind of place to move through them quickly. But when they start getting weighted down by things like pentacles, it's something that, you know, even if you aren't staying in the space of the suffering or you feel like you're sort of opening up, you may be opening up, but you may have inadvertently sort of taken this fear of abandonment with you or a fear of intimacy with you or, you know, something like that, that is actually sort of plaguing you or hanging on to you. And so while mentally you may feel as though you've moved on with the five of coins here, there is something that it has affected sort of the mindset or it has affected sort of the way that you see things um, or the way that you feel about things or, you know, maybe in relationships before it was really easy for you to trust people because you had never been cheated on or you had never been deceived or you had never experienced something like that. And now it's sort of harder for you to formulate that kind of trust with another person because it has happened to you. That's a direct result of, that's something that is staying with you as a result of a past experience, right? And we can't go back and undo the past experience. All we can do is ask ourselves, you know, is this serving my highest and best good? Maybe holding a firm boundary and making it more, um, uh, how do I wanna say? difficult for someone to win your trust like making them really show it with their actions making them really show up before we trust them is a better approach than trust you know trying trying to force ourselves to trust someone quickly um but then not really doing it and becoming sort of insecure this is giving me this green is giving me envy or jealousy or is something like that so i don't know i don't know but it's coming through very very strongly it's like um and it's, it's not representational of who you are, what you really think or what you really believe, or this could be your person. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> then you have this lover's energy in the hangman. And you know, oftentimes the healthiest way to release a mindset or to gain that clarity, you know, with the hangman, there's that halo of enlightenment around his head and this is the release this is the clarity this is the okay actually it's not serving my highest and best good i'm actually drawing more of these um events into my life by holding on to this thought or by you know sort of holding everyone to the standard that they could potentially be someone who could potentially put me in this position and so this hangman energy is the clearing out of of this fear and so how is it that the hangman energy does that because if we can get a different perspective on it if we can allow ourselves the problem with suffering is that none of us want to feel it no no human is like i really want to suffer you know what i mean um and in fact most of us spend most of our lives trying to run away from or prevent suffering in our life and with the hangman, this energy, when we can look back and we can clearly see, okay, this is what happened. All right. And, and two, it is, it is um, the energy of also even acknowledging where maybe we saw a red flag or maybe there was an indication or maybe we didn't want to see it. Maybe we didn't want to hear it. Maybe we can look back and we can see the energy that we ourselves were in at the time and say, oh, you know, maybe I was naive at the time or maybe I was, you know, coming back from a heartbreak or I'd been alone for a long time and this person was the first person I'd been interested in in a long time and then I saw these red flags, but I really didn't want to be alone anymore. And so the risk of trusting someone that was showing me red flags versus the risk of continuing to be by myself, I, I went with, I chose the red flags. You know, like I chose to overlook the red flags so that I could have companionship, you know? And, and then we, we can grow, we can see clearly like, oh, okay, I don't, I, I'm, I'm not gonna make decisions from that place again. I'm not going to, you know what I'm saying? Um, but we can also look back and say,
we can find the gift, you know, um, we can, we can say, I, I wouldn't know this or I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have had this experience had it not been for that, or I wouldn't have had, I wouldn't have learned this lesson had it not been for that, or possibly even, um, there's the recognition that this is a soulmate and that there was likely a soul contract there with the lovers. And it's like, yes, I can look back on my choices and see, see the role that I played in this thing. Um, but also I can see that this was a soulmate and that this may have been a lesson that I wanted to learn in this life or that, you know, there's something here with these two fives, the lovers and the hangman, where there's definitely this changing of a mindset. And with the lovers and the hangman being major arcana and the five of swords and the five of coins being minor arcana, it's saying to me that there something happened that caused some suffering that may have kept you stuck or stagnant or this is your person. And even when you broke through the stagnancy of it, there you took with you something of it you took with you some type of mentality or something of it again i'm getting jealousy and envy but i don't know you know it doesn't have to be for everyone um but with the lovers and the hangman these major arcana coming in these are the things that the universe puts in our path that are there for a reason and this is our opportunity to look back on this or to look back on this relationship or to look back on this choice and see something very clearly that brings us enlightenment or that brings us some kind of new knowledge um, or and and or <laughs> clears this space of jealousy or envy or stagnancy or you know some self-defeating way of thinking or looking at things or some easily triggered fear of abandonment or fear of intimacy or a fear like that um and so it feels like this is a moment that where this is basically what we've been talking about the whole time of where we are changing a mindset or we're changing a way of seeing things or we're clearing out old energy so that a cycle can totally complete here. When, yeah, I just about said, when something is clearing out, yeah, it's because something new is beginning. I got that, and then you have the Ace of Wands on the star card here. Um, and let me see what this is. Holy crap, the Ten of Coins. See, you guys have something really amazing, some kind of new start that has a lot of potential that is definitely very meant to be. And as I feel some past situation is also very meant to be, now, can this be a new start with a past person? It can be. But if you are going to have a new start with a past person, you have to start a new energy. Otherwise, it will end in the same way that it ended the last time. You're, if you bring the old energy, if you bring the old mistrust, if you bring the old... Um, and believe me, I am not talking about a narcissist. I'm not talking about anyone abusive. I If you got out of that, thank God, and don't look back. You know, that's my feeling on it. But... This is something where um, possibly for some of you, something is being healed in a big, big way. The star card is also a major arcana. So this can be where um, there is an opportunity for a return of hope and optimism to a situation that may have looked pretty bleak. But the hope is coming back and the ability to heal is coming back only because the mindset has completely shifted and changed. Um, and that's for some of you. For others of you, this is a brand, brand, brand new start. And, you know, when you go from the five of coins to the ten of coins, the five of coins indicates a loss, right? And the ten of coins indicates abundance. So you can see that this shift in the mindset is affecting everything tangible in your life. It doesn't just affect this relationship or the way that you feel about love or the way that you feel in a connection or you don't feel in a connection. Or, you know, um, and see the green on this card is a completely different green. It's a green of abundance. It's a green of health and vitality and well-being. So, so for sure, guys, um, this is the beginning of a new cycle that holds a lot of potential. The Ten of Coins is not somewhere we start, you know. It's somewhere we 
invest and 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 and get to, right? Um, But it it doesn't have to be money, although it can be, um, but it can be whatever currency, you know, really holds a lot of value to you. So that can be love, that can be money, that can be well-being and health, that can be whatever it is. But with the Ace of Wands, there is this energy of you getting an opportunity for something that you really desire. And just the opportunity alone that's coming in, it is it is coming in divine timing. It is coming at this time because it is meant to be at this time because you're ready for it. Um, but it's also something that is tied up to your wish fulfillment with the Ace of Wands and the Star card. This can also be where you are someone's... Um, hope, dream, and desire, you are their wish fulfillment, and they may finally be taking the opportunity that presents itself to act upon this. Um, And it has a lot of potential. If both of you are investing in it, it has a lot of potential. Wow. Whoa, look how this went down. So the Eight of Wands fell out first and the Strength card fell out last, but the Strength card literally fell right on top of the Eight of Wands. And the Knight of Coins and the Death card fell out very similarly. And then you have the Four of Coins on the bottom of the deck. So incredibly interesting energy. Um, the Strength card in this particular deck is an 11 but the strength card in Rider Waite is an eight. And you have the eight here of the eight of wands. Um, it, it feels significant, you know, this eight and this eight. And the strength card is a card of Leo. So something, you may be getting some kind of communication during Leo season or from a Leo um, that I feel like has the potential to move something beyond an obstacle. The Eight of Wands is communication, but it is also like moving forward successfully without a, um, without obstacle, without delay. And with the Knave of Coins and the Death card, there is this energy of being mindfully aware of an ending that needs to happen. Um, and it, 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 you know, with the Knight of Coins, there is this energy of, Sometimes it's really, really hard, but you just have to put one foot in front of the other. And there is an element of trust here because, um, how do I want to say it? It's like a return of the original energy that I was talking about in this reading where it's like just the way will open up for you. You don't have to know exactly where you're going from the beginning or you don't have to see the complete and total whole picture. You just have to have the faith to put one foot in front of the other, take one step at a time. And, you know, sometimes it when we have feelings for someone or when we are reliant upon our job to pay our rent or, you know, we don't have extra funds to be like, well, if I can't find something for a couple of weeks, I'll still be okay. You know what I mean? It, there is an energy here of... Um, Almost, you know, with the four of coins, it's like this energy of holding back or clinging to something because we don't, we don't want to let it go or we don't know, we feel like there is a scarcity. We feel like, you know, especially, I feel like this, it feels very pertinent to relationships, to be honest with you. It's kind of like, well, this person is the best person that I've met so far or, you know, I've. I haven't felt this way for anyone else. So I don't really want to let this person go. I kind of want to hold on to this. Do you know what I'm saying? And, and there is this edging closer to, and to, we have to let it go. And if we also have to trust that if it is meant to be, it will come around. Like we may not know how, we may not know when, we may not know where, Um, But there is this sense of just trusting that what is meant to be will be with that star card energy, the Ace of Wands and the Ten of Coins. It's like, um, I 
I don't know if you've ever been reading a book um, and been like, I really need these two people to like work out or um, I really need this particular event to happen in this book or I, I need, you know, like um, some books are kind of centered around miscommunication and it's like you see the whole time that there's just some kind of miscommunication and it's like, oh my gosh, if this, or, or even like movies or rom-coms, it's sort of like that energy where it, it's like, I have to know that this is going to work out in the end. Like, I don't want to keep reading it. I don't want to keep watching it. This doesn't work out. So it's almost like this energy of like, I need to skip to the ending and, and see that it works out and then I can keep going with it or whatever. But in life, we don't have that opportunity. The words have not yet been written, right? Um, and the star card even reminds us of that, right? And so too, in, in an opposite sort of way, does the Knight of Pentacles. It's like, sometimes you just have to keep putting one foot in front of the other and trusting, right? Um, but this is actually working to end a certain kind of energy here. And, you know, it's like if you have been in a relationship with someone and you really want them to come back and you want this communication to be from them, let's just say that, um, then you almost have to give up all hope <laughs> that that will happen. Or you almost have to give up this, um, well, I don't want to cut the cords or I don't want to, you know, complete, I, I, I don't want to give up holding space for this person because if I do, then I may jeopardize the ending. Let me tell you, I, I really don't feel that that's the case. Um, so, oftentimes what needs to happen is that we do have to let go in order to let it come back to us. When we are clinging to something, which the four of coins is that type of energy, we can actually squeeze the energetic flow out of the cord that connects us. You know, because we're holding on so tight, we're white knuckling it we're not actually giving the energy an opportunity to flow. I mean, and I'm not saying that that's the case for all of you or whatever, but with the Knight of Coins and the Death card, especially after seeing the Ace of Wands and the Ten of Pentacles and the Star card, there's this sense of, you know, almost like fearing an ending or feeling like I can't, I don't want this ending or I can't handle this ending or this isn't what I really want. And so almost like, living in a way of avoiding it and it, it, when that is the very thing that actually has the opportunity to bring about the new beginning that you actually want you feel what i'm saying and it's like you can't really know that that will be the end result you know you can't really know if that will be the case there is an element of where you have to trust um and yeah it can be very difficult to kind of um, let something go that you don't want to let go of. I mean, you know, we, we've all been there. Um, and with the name of coins, it's just saying, just keep taking one step at a time. One step at a time is good enough. You'll get there. Um, and, and, and it feels like, guys, you're, this is a, a cycle that is really completing right in this time right now. Um, there's something here and it feels like that either a change could happen or this completion could happen and then something new of very strong soulmate could come into your life. And with that soulmate, there may not be as many obstacles. There may be this ability to like move forward without obstacle, without delay. Like how wonderful would that be? Um, but it is also in this energy of like, you know, you can't have that until you've let go of the old, you know what I mean? So you take it as it resonates. Don't let anybody tell you when it's time for you to let go of anything. Like, I feel like that. I don't know more about your life than you do. All I can tell you is that I, this is what I see in the cards. You know what I'm saying? But, um, you know, I also feel like if you let go of something when you're not ready to, you can sit in a space of regret of what if, what if I had just held on for another week? What if I just held on for another month? So, you know, sometimes it's about trying on a mindset and seeing how it feels without actually really taking any action or doing anything and seeing if you can live with it or if it resonates or if it, or if it feels okay to you. Um, you know what I'm saying? But I just, I'm not someone who ever feels like we should force ourselves to do anything. Um, I feel like when something resonates with you, you can adopt it a little bit at a time. Mm. 
you guys have something. Something. Third eight. Jeez, you, you, you're you getting the Nine of Cups. You had the Star card. There is something that is some kind of wish fulfillment for you seriously trying to come in. And it looks like it is the form of a relationship. And something that I feel like is um, has the capacity to sort of advance. Some of you may have already experienced the beginning or maybe like really coming up on this space. Um, it feels like, you know, when you have that Eight of Swords uh, on the bottom of the deck, again, it is about sort of overcoming a way of thinking that is the Eight of Swords is self-entrapment through our thoughts. You know, it's the thoughts that we're having that we're allowing that are probably reoccurring and are probably at times intrusive that don't allow us to expand beyond them. You know, we can't move beyond that space because it's blocking us in. It's keeping us in a certain energy. It's keeping us in a certain space. It's keeping us in a certain thought mill, sort of, that keeps perpetuating the experience. Um, where, where your thoughts go, you know, that's what your reality is. And so there's something here with the star on top of the Eight of Swords in this particular card. It is sort of giving me this feeling of there is some kind of recovery or there is some kind of health that is being restored or that is sort of pushing this Eight of Swords energy to the back or even maybe busting through it altogether. Um, and this is so um, you can have your wish fulfillment. Again, you got the Ace of Coins with the Nine of Cups. This is a solid and stable new beginning, something that you've been wishing for. And it comes when you allow yourself to be emotionally content exactly where you are. Um, to either see it, to feel it, to be it, whatever. To believe it, to kind of sort of unabashedly take on the energy of it and not look back. And it's a very unapologetic energy, I can tell you. It's a very clear, very unapologetic energy. With the Three of Cups and the Two of Cups, there is some kind of relationship coming in that feels like some type of celebration. Again, this feels like something easy. It feels like something that has doesn't have this friction or restriction or you know, energy fighting against it all the time, interference, whatever. It feels like something that um, is able to sort of blossom and develop and progress through happiness and joy and celebration instead of suffering and turmoil and difficulty, you know? Um, and so this may just be like coming to a place with yourself where you know that that is possible that there are relationships like that out there and that you could have one, you know? Sometimes it's about busting through a mentality that, well, this is what my experience has been, so this is what always happens, so this is what has to happen. It doesn't have to happen that way. You can have a different experience. Um, and so definitely I feel there is a soulmate coming in. I do feel like this person is looking for love. I do feel like they're serious. I do feel like this is solid. Um, and, you know, I, I feel... I feel like this is the new beginning, for sure. Two aces, Pisces, um, the star card, the strength card, the two of cups, the ten of coins, the ace of wands, the ace of coins, the nine of cups. I mean, these are really good cards, and these cards are really much more focused on happiness and on joy and on contentment than they are on suffering. The suffering is like we're completing this and we just have to let it go and we have to let go of any residual effect that it's having on us because you know you don't want to be the thing that's introducing the friction or the restriction or the obstacle to a relationship that doesn't need to have it because you experienced it in the past and then you're projecting it onto this. You see what I'm saying? So even if it is a past person coming back around or even if it is something new we have to completely close the door on that energy. Let me get you some messages. All right, the messages, literally not a single one landed on the desk and they all went flying. 
um, for if you're dealing with a water sign. Which is interesting. I don't know that that's really happened before. Your intellect arouses me. Acceptance. Everything happens for a reason. I regret lying to you. I miss hearing your voice. I wish we could go back. If you are dealing with a fire sign. Boundaries. Firm boundaries are needed now. You broke my heart. We need to let each other go. I don't know what you want. You were the best thing in my life. Oof, that energy feels so conflicted. Um, I felt like there was a flipper, so I'm just looking to see. Nope. All right, if you are dealing with an earth sign, You are getting unplugged. Working less will help you strengthen your relationship. I bury myself in work to forget about you. I can't stop thinking about you. I can't reach out. Strictly sexual. This connection is passionate but not enduring. I feel like this person's an avoider. All right. If you are dealing with an air sign, I can be myself with you. Finding out the truth crushed me. Finances, financial challenges are affecting the connection. New love, a new love or recommitment is to love is developing. I look for you everywhere. Sometimes I stay awake thinking about you and I can't be with you. This is someone, they may have their own limiting beliefs. Like they may be in an energy of the eight of swords where, you know, they have to let go of some idea or some feeling that like it can't work or it won't work or you know, they're not capable of it or they're not deserving of it. Something like that, it feels like, okay? So Pisces, this is what I have for you today. I really hope it helps. I hope it brings you some peace and some clarity. If it does, let me know. Like, share, subscribe, comment. I love to hear from you guys. Until next time, I send you off with all my very best. Always, always, always. Bye-bye.